Hi, this is Mirja, and today we're going to be talking about something that's close to my heart because it's also something that I'm going through myself. Today we're going to be talking about overcoming grief, dealing with grief over the loss of a beloved family member, your pet. Uh, my dog, Ozzy, 12 years old, Maltese, he passed away about a week ago, a little over a week ago. He, um, he had cancer. He was almost 12 years old. He's definitely one of the loves of my life. <laughs> so I asked my friend Denise, who is a conscious family coach and the founder of the Good Grief Resource Center, which is a wonderful charity, and she's also a bereavement counselor. And I asked Denise to chat with me today to talk about grief over the loss of a beloved pet, who for us was a family member, and how we can deal with our grief and maybe learn some things to help us heal. So with that, I want to say hi, Denise. Hi, Nirja. Oh, thank you. <laughs> how are you? I'm well, thanks, you and I uh, just want to give my condolences on the loss of your beloved family member, Ozzy. It's not an easy time for you, the other members of your family, or Ozzy's companion. Yeah, Ozzy has a brother, Max, who's doing fine, and uh, I have to say that this is the first time I really understand what it, the words grief-stricken I understand that now, and, and uh, i got to say, my whole family, my husband, my kids, even his brother Max, it's like a family wound, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, we had, you, you and I spoke because you, you, you also are empathetic because you lost your beloved buddy. So the fact that you're a bereavement counselor and you understand the pain of losing a soulmate like Buddy. I thought you could talk today. What, what comes to your mind when you when someone tells you they've lost a beloved pet and their family is devastated? What comes to mind? Well, first of all, Nirja, I do um, have empathy and compassion for that person because the loss is devastating. And it's devastating for a number of reasons. First of all, you know, the pet is so much a part of the family. It's included in all the family events. But even still, there's even, there's a very unique bond that exists between our pet and ourselves. And they're there as a constant companion. They provide acceptance, that unconditional love, that emotional support. They really are a constant companion and totally seem to understand us. Plus, there's this dependency. They have this dependency on us. Mm. So often our day is surrounded in ritual for caring for these little dependent beings. And, you know, just even an, an action such as getting up in the morning and have them bouncing to their food bowl. Yeah. You know, you miss you miss those things or trying to go to the washroom and they get their nose into the door and <laughs> whip it open. And you they have their, you have that special routine, special. that special routine with them, you know? Absolutely. I mean, some of these things are really can be quite annoying, but in their absence, you know, they're missed profoundly. And, you know, even more importantly, I believe the death is, is even, um, more devastating because the people feel like they're going crazy. Um, the academic term that we give to this sort of grief is called disenfranchised grief. Disenfranchised grief. Yes, disenfranchised grief. And what that means is that the culture or the society um, deems it insignificant and doesn't acknowledge. Mm. And even the person themselves feels ridiculous in the mission of the context and the intensity of the sorrow that they feel because they think it's an animal, it's not a person. Mm. That oftentimes you'll hear this individual speak about the death of or, or 
they'll feel personally the death of their pet more profoundly than even some of the deaths of family members or friends. And so it's a very difficult um, thing for people to grasp and understand, and it doesn't help like I said, because of this disenfranchised grief where uh, the grief isn't being openly acknowledged. So one of the first steps in the whole healing process when we lose a beloved pet is to acknowledge that we are grieving. And as I mentioned earlier, Matt, you know, Ozzy's brother is grieving as well. And the other household pets, even if you have a cat and a dog, and the dog dies, the cat miss its companion and grieve. And so all are family home by this boss. And so what we want to do is find a way to bring expression to those feelings that we're experiencing. And those feelings, especially with a pet loss, um, can center around guilt. And this can be quite immobilizing. The um, person can get caught up in the if only, mm. it's an accidental death or a sudden death of their pet and they weren't prepared for it and they didn't know that an illness existed. Or maybe there were some financial constraints that didn't allow for them to explore um, maybe longer life-giving options, and so you can get. I, I I feel that because Ozzy had cancer, and when he learned of it, I changed his diet. But there was always a little part of me that wondered, you know, why didn't I do this a year ago? Why didn't I change his diet before he got cancer? Mm -hmm. There's yeah. a lot of second guessing and a lot of hypocrisy. And so you really want to find a way to honor those feelings because we know whatever we resist persists. Mm. So to honor and welcome those emotions, okay. even welcoming anger. Um, maybe an animal got out of the yard and was a runner mm -hmm. and gets hit by a car. Mm -hmm. And so you can uh, be angry towards the driver that hit your beloved pet. Mm -hmm. There's, there's all kinds of, of um, emotions surrounding the death. And so what you want to do initially is, A, you need to acknowledge that the grief is real, mm -hmm. is intense, mm -hmm. there is sorrow. It's a time to be gentle with yourself. And it's a time to bring expression to these feelings of guilt, anger, and sadness. And when we welcome those emotions and find a way to express them, then that gives us, that provides the catharsis for our healing. So there's some things that we can do with that to help us in the healing process. Oftentimes people will feel comforted by having a ritual and commemorating their beloved pet and having a ceremony. And this is especially helpful if there's children in the family because this could be their introduction to death. They may not have experienced another death prior to the death of their pet. And so the parents can really be a model and an expression of how we honor part of our family and how we commemorate and celebrate the life and the gifts that they so freely and willingly shared with each of us. Is there, you know, some things that you normally advise your, you know, families that you deal with that are trying to heal? I mean, what are some of the things that? Well, how, some of the how can some love of the be how can love be the answer here? That's what I want to know. How do we make love the the uh, catalyst for healing? Well, certainly by expressing that love that we had for our pet. So you can do that by having a special photo taken. Mm -hmm. um, you could put a collage of pictures together to celebrate your pet. You could put a book together. You can create a scrapbook. A lot of people are into scrapbooking. You might do a scrapbook. 
you could have um, an opportunity to gather friends and family around for an actual ritual or if you were one that went to dog parks and you met people there you might invite them to participate in this ritual mm -hmm. because the important thing is is that you're wanting to honor this pain that you're experiencing you want to you want to give it a name and you you want to recognize that there was this loss and that this family pet was very important mm. and when you are able to capture those memories mm -hmm. tell your story I mean that's what grief is grief is a response to having loved and so when we have that opportunity to share our story with others and for others to bear witness to that emotion mm -hmm. and to find ways to give that emotion expression mm then that helps us to move forward in our healing journey. One, I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, the one thing I can advise, and sadly this does happen in the case of a pet, especially with the wee little goldfish pets, mm. are, which are really important to young children. Often that's their first little pet is they get a, a wee little goldfish. Mm -hmm. And the goldfish dies and, you know, they're out going and buying another one to replace. And we know that just like a, a person in the family, another person doesn't replace them and what they had to offer to the family. Mm -hmm. So certainly when it comes to uh, thinking about when is the right time to replace the pet that's died, you'll never fully replace that pet. Mm -hmm. The time to look at getting a new pet is when you have fully healed from the loss of the pet that has died. And so we know we can't just go out and buy a new dog or get a new cat or get I, a, I can't even think of that. That's so far from... And yet many people will say, oh, just go get another one. But, but absolutely, it's not honoring the relationship that you shared. So what were those five things we talked about earlier? I thought they were, were lovely to to mention here today. We were talking about those five. Well, the number one is acknowledging your grieving. And these are five these are five um, things that you advise, like you've seen work in helping five, people here. Yeah. So acknowledge so acknowledge your Yes, grief. you want to acknowledge the loss. We want to Recognize that your beloved animal has died and you want to acknowledge the loss. You want to find a way to express the emotions that you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. If there's guilt or anger, the sorrow, you want to find a way to express it. Exactly. Okay. You want to provide a memorial and commemorate your loved animal and celebrate their love through story sharing, through pictures, through talking to friends, some way in which you can share your story with others. Mm -hmm. And of course, the fifth one we didn't actually touch on, but there is helping in the healing. Or there's healing. <laughs> That's okay. This is an organic chat. <laughs> it's not scripted, people. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a healing in the healthy. Mm. Um, so, you know, during that time you may miss having your pet around, you could certainly become a pet sitter for others. If you have family or friends that have a pet and they're going away on a holiday, you know, you might be the, the caregiver for their pet while they take their holiday. Or there might be an elderly person in the neighborhood who isn't able to get out and walk their pet. And you may offer your services to walk their pet. Or you may go to the local humane society and take the uh, pets there and be a walker. So there's can, there's so, different ways. So, put your, so actually put yourself with other animals. Put, put yourself in their proximity in a helpful way. That's right. That's yeah. right. Or you may become an advocate mm. for others. So, you might so you're, you you're might turning your pain into helping. You're turning your pain into 
service. Absolutely. Or you may even decide to start a pet support loss group online for so others, a Facebook community. How are there, I mean, when, what role does gratitude and acceptance like play into the grieving process? I'm, I'm, I keep feeling like the reason why I'm grieving so much is that I don't want to accept it. Well, denial is huge in the death of a pet. Denial is huge. Um, it's The block is right there with the guilt. Um, yeah, it's, and the it's gratitude, very you know, hard. My, my husband was great. He's like, every time we cry because we miss Ozzy, he's like, put your in your mind, install in your mind all the gratitude that you have for having him for 12 years. And I don't know that I'm there yet where even when I'm full of gratitude, I'm still so sad. But, you know, is that a path that we're supposed to be taking through this as well? Is, is trying to be grateful more than sorrowful? Initially, you have to feel the sorrow and accept it, right? As I said earlier, whatever we resist will persist. So it's very important to acknowledge the sorrow and to be gentle with yourself. Certainly, your husband's words of wisdom are, are profound in anything. You know, obviously, when we can come and share our story and bring those moments of gratitude to life, that's actually when we bring our loved one to life in the daily and we celebrate their life in the daily is and honor them and that's the one way that we have that's a gift for us to continue their legacy even in their physical absence. Yeah. Well, see, I know you would know. You you I feel I, I find myself asking myself, you know, what beliefs do I need? to feel less pain because I know that the beliefs that are coming up are me are I'm never going to be happy again I'm always going to have this hole in my heart all of these like already assuming that the rest of my life is not going to be as great because he's no longer here do people say that to you do you get those from other people as well absolutely absolutely I mean that's the time that we're in the depths of our sorrow and it's hard to move forward when we're in that place. And it's and it's not the time. It's no different than if if you're when we're grieving it's a heart wound. And if we were wounded anywhere else in our body physically, you know, you couldn't get up and walk around the block if you just sprained your ankle. You need time to heal that ankle. But I think it's a very powerful step and it speaks to your commitment to love and giving and service, uh, Nirja, by your willingness to bring this topic to the attention of so many others. And it really is liberating and gives a sense of freedom to those who have and are intimate with what it feels like to have their, their pet die yeah. and not have a place to express it or to feel the freedom in acknowledging what that companionship and relationship and that bond meant to them. Mm. You know, I have to say, Denise, you're, you are right on. You really are special because the minute you said, oh, there's Max, <laughs> the minute you said to, you know, acknowledge that you're grieving and, and, and have it, don't deny it. There's like a relief, like, okay, I can be sad. I can Absolutely. really take it this in, that this is a life changing. My life is different now. My reality is different, as is with my, my whole family. My daughters grew up with us as a, like a brother, 12 years. So I really appreciate that. And I want everybody to know that Denise does such loving work with individuals and families, helping them heal with grief, with through the grief. And um, we're going to be putting the website, if you want to find out more about Denise, check out the website on this video here and below. And Denise, thank you so much. You've brought love and peace.
to me right now. I appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mircha.